Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go over how to set up a document in Photoshop that will take a linked version of the exports from Substance Painter and how you can set up your RMA document and think or export in there rather than doing it through Substance. Obviously, Substance Painter allows you to do a lot of this sort of stuff, but sometimes you want a little bit more control um, and you like, and if you want to use Photoshop to kind of finish bits off and things like that and just to control everything uh, there's some benefits to doing that so I'm just going to show you how to set that up okay so I've just got this trim sheet that uh, I've made in Substance Painter and I'm going to export these textures using the standard uh, metalness roughness workflow so uh, export path so export textures so I'm using PBR Metal Rough, which will create a bunch of textures for me, uh, which we'll need for a metalness workflow. And I'm going to put them into a folder. So I've got a folder called uh, Bunker Trim, and I'm just going to put it in this folder called Exports. And, and let's select that. And that's that. I'm going to just save these out as 1024, just to keep it nice and quick. But obviously you could set these out bigger and then use Photoshop to reduce the size uh, if you wanted to. I'm going to save these out as target so they'll be pretty much lossless um, which means they'll go out at a higher quality um, and I'm just going to hit export and if I open the folder what it's done is it's created me an AO a base color, height, metallic, a normal, a roughness, TJ and this is kind of like standard um, before you coming out of substance. So I'm just going to open Photoshop up. I've just created a basic document in Photoshop, so 1024, a 1024 document. Again, size of this you can change if you needed to. I'm going to go to File and rather than Open, I'm going to go to Place Linked. And I'm going to navigate to my folder and I'm going to create my um, and select my base color TGA and hit Place. And as you see, this is what it does. So it basically creates this, um, it drops this straight into the document and it has this cross on it. If I just double click, then that will embed that in on its own layer. And it has this little link icon. And basically this means that this is now live linked to a file that's externally, you know, an external file. Um, it's important that you save that in the right place and that that's the place where you keep your stuff so that if I go to update it, it knows to, it will look at that file and it will update this one. So just to show you how that works, if I'm in here now, I'm gonna change the color of this thing to red, like that. And I'm just going to do the same thing, file, export textures, keep it all the same, it's going to the same place, same naming conventions, hit export, okay so that will have saved that now if I jump over to Photoshop you see it's updated it and that'll do that for all your exports so once they're in that linked state rather than in the um, just opening them so I can load in the rest of mine So this is getting a bit busy, so I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call my folder RMA, and within that, I am going to drop my. And I'm just going to move those round so the roughness is on top, metalness is underneath, and AO. So this would be RGB, yeah? All within the RMA. This could be in its own folder as well if I wanted to. I could call this base for base color and that just means that if we have multiple versions or we add things on top of this we can we can it will be restricted to that folder so if I put the base on the top and then switch it off then we've just got our RMA exposed this background layer it's not doing anything so what normally happens when we do these is people if they want to make an RMA, they'll copy this out and they'll go into the channels and they'll drop it in red like that and copy it into there. And then I'll come back out and go and make a copy of this and then drop it into 
here, um, etc, etc. Which is a fine, but you can't edit them or do anything with them if you do them like that. There's a much easier way to do it, which is basically to use blending options. So if I select this, this is we only want this to be seen in the red channel. So if I right click on it and go to blending options, then there's an option here for channels. So what I can do is I can just switch off the blue channel because I don't want it in the blue channel and I can switch off the green channel and hit OK. And now that is only in the red channel. If I go to metallic, go to its blending options, switch off red, switch off blue. So it's only in the green channel. This one, AO, we just want to be in the blue channel. And there we go. So if I now go into my channels, you can see that roughness is in there, uh, metallic is in there, and our AO is in there. And I can now just export that. But the cool thing about that is now I can edit this, you know, do things to this channel, and it will just update that channel. Um, so that's a neater way of doing things. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to just show you quickly with this is that if you apply filters, it because it's a, a linked texture, it works slightly differently. Um, so a classic thing you would do with like this is you would go to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And the classic way to do it is you sort of over sharpen it. And then you hit OK. And then you go up to edit and you go to fade and you would fade the sharp out that way. But you can see all that stuff's grayed out and that's basically because this is a linked layer, it doesn't bake it into the actual texture. Instead what it does is it drops this sort of sub filter uh, underneath it. So if I switch that off, you can see that that's it's not doing. If you want to edit the, the, the any filters that you add, you can actually go into them and double click on them and it will open it back up again. So it's completely not non-destructive which is awesome. It also means that if I change this and do something like quite extreme with it like this, I can still go back to substance and like I said, let's go back and change this to yellow, say, I go file, export textures, export, okay. And then jump back over to potato shop. And you can see that that filter has been applied automatically so um, which is way over the top so there's a lot you can do with this using this technique in Photoshop